Thank you, everyone. Good evening. I want to point out that my partner in crime from the Assembly in the parallel bill is Felix Ortiz, an Assembly member from Brooklyn, so I want to just give a shout out to my friend Felix. And Helen already laid out a number of exactly the issues, and I too want to hear from these experts. I'm not the pension expert, I'm not the scientist, but I can tell you a story about how I think government's supposed to work. We are supposed to be responsive to the needs of our communities, to our constituents. We are supposed to recognize that government must constantly change and adapt to offer the best options possible. And to insert ourselves at this point in time in whatever ways are humanly possible in reversing climate change. And so it's not one answer, it's not one bill, it's not one forum, it's not one group. You know, the concept of it'll take a village, it's gonna take more than a village for us to save our planet. So when a group of environmentalists came to me and said, help us get the state of New York to divest its pension funds from fossil fuels. I said, why? They said, because it will send an enormous message that the answer to global problems is not to put more money and support in fossil fuel um, products, in fossil fuel industries, but in fact, to convince everyone to walk away as quickly as possible and shift to sustainable options for our planet. I said, that makes good sense. I said, so how much does the state invest in fossil fuels? And I learned that uh, it's a little, it's, the numbers are, are more public, I think, than on the, on the state pension plan. So there's $180 billion invested by the state's pension plan under controller Tom DiNapoli, and about 5.2 billion is invested in fossil fuels in the 200 largest fossil fuel companies. I thought, oh, well 5.2 billion dollars being removed um, from the state pension fund would certainly send a message and it, would tur it turns out it would be the largest government entity to do so, so far. Um, and so thank you churches and universities and the Rockefeller Brothers Fund for taking that step earlier. I thought, wow, if the standard oil people can get out of fossil fuels, maybe I need to think about this a little bit. Um, yes, exactly. And so we started to look at, okay, well, what does that mean? Of course, the pensions have to be invested for fiduciarily, in fiduciarily responsible ways to make sure that that pension money is there for the pensioners of New York State who need it for their retirement. And that is a fundamental moral obligation and legislative obligation and actually a bit of a constitutional obligation for the state. So we started to explore how do we accomplish our goal of getting the state to divest from fossil fuels without putting workers and pension, future pensioners at risk. So we did some of the math that Helen's talking about and the more experts than I understand much better and we thought, okay, one, it's $5 billion on $180 billion. We're not gonna ask them to do it overnight. So it's actually a five-year plan to divest over a five-year period. And some is from coal, which based on the economics of coal, why would anyone invest in coal anymore? So that seems like a pretty easy um, answer. Get out of coal. Coal's only a losing economic proposition. There's no win there. So that leaves X amount, even less than five billion for us to invest somewhere else. Well, so let's say it's four billion over a five-year period in oil and gas. Less than a billion a year to divest? I don't think is that complicated for smart,
people who are running pensions and who are making sure we're getting a good return. We're not asking to get a better return with something else. We're saying as good a return. Now we were told, wait a second, it's not constitutional to tell the state legislator, let, excuse me, the state controller, how to invest the funds. So we were like, well, that's interesting. And there have been some lawsuits that have been lost by others who wanted the state to divest from different things. So we took a look at those lawsuits and we talked to some constitutional experts. And they explained to us, well, if you write the bill in this way, yeah, you probably would lose in court. If you write the bill this way, you maybe would lose, the, lose in court. If you write the bill this way, you probably can't lose in court. Because what you need to do is make it clear that you're not telling the controller to put anybody's pensions monies at risk. You're saying, find alternatives that are of equal value and invest there instead. So really after call, four billion over a five year period, can you find alternative investments? Well, I'm delighted to be here tonight because we have some experts in the room who are gonna tell us probably yes. And I was really fascinated when I was reading about um, fossil free funds, which you say three times fast, I dare you, fossil free funds. And how fossil free funds were doing as an investment class compared to fossil fuel funds. And guess what? They're doing just fine, thank you. So not only does the controller of the state of New York, if we were to pass this law, have everything under the sun to invest in except fossil fuels, but if he wanted to just keep that amount of money in the energy sector, he could probably do better than fossil fuels are doing currently by going fossil free. But I'm not saying you have to go fossil free as your alternative to fossil fuels. We're saying come up with alternative investments that are equally valuable and that won't risk anybody's pension funds. And, and I know some people in the environmental community thought we were going a little too far, but we wanted to make sure we didn't get through the exercise of passing it in both houses, having it signed by the governor, and then end up in the courts and lose. And so we wanted to make sure that this was a bill that could stand under state scrutiny and state law. So even then we say, okay, if the state controller determines in his wisdom, because we do hire the state controller to use his wisdom to effectively invest pension funds and protect the future retirement of state um, and county and municipal workers outside the city of New York, so we even put up an out clause there. If they really determine they can't do it in this timeline, they get extra time. They can delay the time clock to give themselves more time. Now, I don't really think they would need it, but I'm not the expert. People here are the expert. So our bill pretty simply is saying, we have an awful lot of facts out there about why we must reduce the use of fossil fuels, the investment in fossil fuels, it sends a real both dollar number and moral message to pull out of investing in the top 200 fossil fuel companies. We enormously respect both controllers, state and city controllers efforts to be activist shareholders in a variety of ways and totally get it and agree that there are many times being an activist shareholder can radically influence the behavior of a company. But with all due respect to my friends Tom DiNapoli and Scott Stringer, although I'm not talking about the city bill, I'm talking about the state bill, you can't as an activist shareholder convince the 200 largest fossil fuel companies to stop being fossil fuel companies. Now maybe if we all pulled out, they would go, crap, nobody will buy our stocks, we better come up with a better idea. And then we could reinvest in them, okay? If somebody who's now a fossil fuel company decides they're getting out of fossil fuel, great. We could be, then they would be eligible to take our investment funds again. That's cool. But I'm not sure those 200 companies are going to be the first ones out of the box to actually change their mission statement and what they do for a living. So, just very quickly, this can be done. I think it's morally the right thing to do. 
It can be done without putting our pensions at risk, which is morally, fiduciarily, and legally what the state must do. It's not a silver bullet. The con state controller and I have agreed to disagree on this so far, and I've told him, you know what? If he decides to change his mind before we get a bill passed, all the better. Let him do it voluntarily. That totally works for me. If other states and cities around the country get there first, more power to them. But I think the message has to be clear. We can't do just little things, and we certainly can't do nothing. We have to up the ante in every part of our lives to make sure that we are doing everything possible to slow down and reverse climate change as you already heard and i bet if you're here tonight you already know the number one way for us to do something about climate change is to stop using fossil fuels and so there's it's not that complicated even when you're not the brilliant scientist to understand we sort of have to figure out how to go cold turkey on the fossil fuels. And as Helen already pointed out, the good news is the technical research and discoveries in sustainable alternatives are moving forward at a rate I think many of us never even imagined five years ago. So that we're probably not asking anyone to go into the dark ages. We're not asking people to turn off the lights and use candles and turn off the computers and never be able to wash their clothing again that's and just walk everywhere we're not talking about that we're talking about having sustainable alternatives that yes can use more investment but can pick up the pace even faster the more we all as societies as governments say fossil fuels are not acceptable we need to get out of those businesses thank you all very much <laughs>